I want to get to cars. Um, I've been, you know, covering this industry for almost 20 years now. And as a result, manufacturers often give me a, a motorcycle or a car or a truck. And they say, test drive this in the real world and see what it's like. Um, and I take them up on that. So this week I am driving a Chevrolet Colorado um, the Z71 trim, which just means it's a, a mid-sized pickup truck with beefed up suspension and wheels. And it's a really interesting vehicle for me to drive because last year I bought kind of the big brother to this. Last year I bought the Chevy Silverado ZR2, which is a full-size pickup truck with the sort of off-road trim. Um, it was a lot more expensive than this. And I kind of wish I'd bought this less expensive version instead. It starts at $40,000 um, and it's got a peppy little inline four engine that I like. I want to bring in David Welch to talk about this. He's our Detroit bureau chief and he joins us out of Motown. David, I got to say that uh, I have always kind of poo-pooed these mid-sized pickup trucks thinking that they're just like cars with a, um, you know, with an open bed in the back. But this one actually feels big and beefy and I'm genuinely impressed as a, you know, a diehard V8 fan with the 2.7 liter inline four. It's got almost 400 pound feet of torque. It really moves the truck around. You know, mid the midsize pickup category is really, I mean, those trucks now, if you were to compare its dimensions to a Chevy Silverado from like the late 90s, because the full size trucks have gotten so big, I bet it's not that much smaller. Uh, and so they really are of decent size these days. And the full-size one, the one you bought, I don't even know how you garage that thing. Uh, they're just gigantic. They're, I, I find them unwieldy to drive in traffic. If I if I wanted to pick up, I, I drive a Mini to by comparison. <laughs> um, I, I'd probably get the uh, something you know in that category you're talking about, the mid-size truck. I will say that mm. I don't garage uh, the full-size, the Silverado. It does not fit you don't in my park garage. Street in Manhattan, do you? <laughs> no, I live out in the suburbs, so I park it in my driveway. Uh, wife gets the one-car garage. I suffer with that. Um, Simone, do you drive? Does, does your does your car even fit in the garage? No, no, the truck does not fit in the garage. Uh, yes, I do, and we re recently purchased a um, Hyundai Santa Fe hybrid, actually, uh, and I love it. It's, yeah, the, it's it's an, it's got a nice ride. It's very quiet. It, those it are handles very, very cool. well. I thought I saw a Hyundai Santa Fe the other day that looked like a Subaru Brat or like an El Camino. David, you know what I'm talking about? That yes, really do, is a yeah. car with an open bed. Yeah, they they're, they do make. Uh, there are a couple companies making those where it, it, it's El Camino ish. Uh, Subaru has one. It's. Uh, is it Subaru? Maybe it, no. It's Hyundai. What do they name that? Is it that's the Veracruz or the Santa Cruz or something? Um, I know you're talking about. Yes, yeah. it is the Santa Cruz. I mean, you're correct. Sorry, I, that's what I saw. The Santa Cruz. It looks like it goes for about uh, thirty grand to start. That's weird. I don't know. I, I guess Subaru I, did have one. I don't think they sell it anymore. They had the Brat, and they had cool rear-facing seats in the back when I was a kid that were definitely dangerous. And I don't think they no, do they it anymore. They sold one more recently, I think. Um, I mean, look, they're, they're kind of a neat configuration, but I, I don't know. It's not that big of a bed, and it's not that roomy inside. It just sort of seems like... And not that big know, of a segment, right? The midsize pickup truck, um, Ford brought... That's a big segment. ...Ranger back, and they and they now have Maverick, which is even smaller. Um, does GM benefit by having a couple different brands? Because you can buy the Chevy Colorado, or you can buy the GMC Canyon, and they split their pickup trucks and their big SUVs that way as well. Do they benefit by having those brands, which essentially sell kind of the same uh, vehicles with a different uh, badge? They do. So first of all, the, the GMCs always sell for more. And and, they, and, and it, like GMC is a massively profitable brand. And half of all GMC sold, uh, GMCs, uh, not just the pickup trucks, everything, is uh, the Denali sub-brand, which is luxury. And basically, if you were to get a GMC Denali uh, Yukon. It's kind of as well equipped as like a Cadillac Escalade, styled differently and all, but uh, and, and it, it makes them a lot of money. There's another thing, too. When, when General Motors is going bankrupt, the Treasury Department had analysts looking at this, and they had hired a firm, a consulting firm, and they were pressing GM to get rid of GMC. And what they found when they did consumer research is that for a GMC truck buyer, their second choice was not Chevy, it was a Ford. So, mm. Uh, wow. they, they said, yeah, that's, that's the research they came up with. 
Uh, so they said, yeah, we can't give this away. We're just going to give away, you know, hundreds of thousands of units a year. Yeah, GMC is, first of all, probably the most, uh, I, I'm certain it is the most profitable brand on a margin basis within GM, uh, just because Cadillac's got some, some sporty sedans that don't make very much money. Um, on a volume, I mean, on a total basis, Chevy would still be the, the because of the sheer volume. But yeah, GMC is a huge money maker for General Motors. Well, can I talk to you a, a little on this Cadillac um, uh, tangent? The, you wrote a great story this week. GM's one hundred thirty thousand dollar Escalade is big, brash, expensive. And green, and I love the idea that they're going to have this enormous car uh, that's going to be an electric vehicle. Um, talk to me about who they're going to market this to. Well, okay. I think of a lot of it is to traditional or you know, current Cadillac Escalade buyers, because even though the gasoline-powered one starts at eighty-one, most of them sell well more than that, and, and can easily get above a hundred thousand uh, dollars per per truck. The V costs um, one fifty-one to start. Yeah, I and mean, you know that's a rare one, but certainly people buy them. So I think, you know, you'll get a lot of traditional Cadillac buyers. You get a lot of, you know, athletes, entertainers have always loved this brand. Uh, I mean, Escalade almost, and in a lot of ways, it does stand on its own within Cad. You, you could have your own Escalade sub brand and sell it at Cadillac dealerships and sell a line of SUVs that way, and I'm sure it'd be great uh, in, 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 with consumers. Because you think about all the other Cadillacs have an alphanumeric. CT4, CT5, XT for their mid-sized SUVs. Escalade's just Escalade, always has been, mm. and, uh, and and so the brand is great. But I I do think they will. There's really almost no competition out there in the large electric EV. In fact, there's none right now. Mercedes uh, is probably the closest uh, there is with the EQS, and that's not as big as an Escalade. Not nearly as big. I actually drove that a few yeah. weeks ago, and it's, uh, you know, it's very luxurious, but it's much smaller. I guess Rivian also, might be. it kind of looks minivan to me, but yeah, Rivian would be the closest thing. I mean, I and, wonder... And those aren't as big. They're not nearly as big. So, so is the pitch that um, these these buyers would be, like, um, climate conscious, or... Because they probably don't care about saving money on gas, which was my, my push to buy a hybrid. Uh, Yes and no. You know, the various points whenever gasoline, I mean, look, there are a lot of people with big vehicles who don't care about gas prices or the environment. Um, there are some that do. I, 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 for those, you know, who worry about conspicuous consumption related to climate change, an, an electric Escalade goes a long way. Now, look, this vehicle is not going to be viewed as newfound sainthood by the environmental movement. I've already heard some complaints that, yeah, it might not run on gasoline, but it still takes a lot of electrically generated power. I'll tell you what it is. It's a, in a sense, it's a reinvention of an American icon. And you know where I get that That's, that phrase. You get that from Mark Royce. <laughs> I get that from your book, dude. Uh, charging ahead, <laughs> GM, Mary Barra, and the reinvention of an American icon. David Welch, uh, the author of that book. So if you care about GM and the transition that you're making, go ahead and pick that one up uh, on Amazon or at your local bookstore. David, thanks so much for joining us.